every parent just wants to do the right thing for their child. But when it comes to vaccines, finding clear answers can feel overwhelming and sometimes even impossible. I'm Dr. Yoshi, board certified pediatrician, and this is the After Visit Summary, where we answer real questions from parents like you. This is the first episode in a 10-part series on vaccines, from safety testing to side effects, ingredients, long-term data, and more. Today, we're diving into why vaccines became such a huge and often emotional topic. We'll talk about how they changed the course of history, why the controversy exists, and how to navigate it all with clarity and compassion. Before we dive in, I want to be completely transparent with you. I don't have any financial conflicts of interest related to vaccines. I requested to opt out of incentive payments tied to vaccine administration, but I later learned that for logistical reasons, my only options were to either accept the payment or have it redirected to my practice's general fund. So here's what I did. I accepted the payment, then donated the full amount to the Institute for Vaccine Safety, an independent organization that evaluates vaccine safety and provides evidence-based information to the public and health professionals. I understand even disclosing this may invite skepticism, and that's okay. I believe transparency is more important than avoiding criticism. My goal with this series is to give you honest, balanced information so you can make decisions that feel right for your family. Vaccines have become one of the most talked about and debated topics in parenting today. For many families, they're seen as one of public health's most impactful tools. But for others, especially parents whose children may have experienced severe side effects, vaccines can represent a painful and deeply personal trauma. Even if those cases are rare, they matter. And both perspectives deserve to be acknowledged with empathy and respect. I'll never forget sitting with a mother and father in my office, talking through whether they wanted to give their one-year-old daughter the MMR vaccine. The mother looked at me tearful and said quietly, I'm just scared. That moment has always stayed with me because it reminded me that behind every vaccine conversation is a parent trying to protect their child. And that's exactly where every conversation should start. If you've ever felt unsure about vaccines, that doesn't make you anti-science. You're asking the right questions and that's what good parenting looks like. Let's take a step back. Before vaccines, Diseases like smallpox, polio, and measles cause devastating epidemics. Yes, public health improvements like sanitation, clean water, and nutrition played a role in reducing disease, but vaccines made the most immediate and dramatic difference for some of the world's deadliest infections. Smallpox killed about three out of every 10 people who caught it and left many survivors blind or disfigured. Polio paralyzed hundreds of thousands of children worldwide. Measles infected millions and caused countless deaths each year. Vaccines didn't just reduce these diseases. In some cases, they led to elimination in parts of the world. Take polio. After the inactivated polio vaccine was introduced in 1955, cases of paralytic polio dropped dramatically. Then there's measles. Before the vaccine was introduced in 1963, hundreds of thousands of children in the U.S. got measles each year. Once widespread vaccination took off, cases plummeted. For a time, measles was declared declared eliminated in the U.S. But here's where it gets more complicated. In 2019, the U.S. saw over 1,200 measles cases, the highest in nearly 30 years. As of 2025, we're already on track to surpass that number. Why? because vaccination rates fell in some communities. And that's the pattern we see again and again. When vaccination rates fall, these diseases come back. These trends show how vaccination helps protect communities, but I also know this doesn't erase individual concerns. Today, vaccine conversations are more polarized than ever. There are a few reasons. First, we live in an information flood. Social media, blogs, podcasts offer more voices than ever, and not all are credible. Sort fact from opinion or genuine risk from fear-based messaging is harder than ever. Second, there's real distrust toward pharmaceutical companies. And honestly, some of it is justified. Companies like Purdue Pharma aggressively promoted OxyContin while downplaying its addictiveness, fueling the opioid epidemic. Pfizer paid over $2 billion in fines in 2009 for illegal marketing and kickbacks to doctors. These weren't vaccine cases, but they shaped public perception. Third, vaccine may Manufacturers are legally protected in the U.S. from direct liability from vaccine injuries. Since 1986, 
2026, families must go through the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, a system designed to keep vaccines available while compensating rare but legitimate claims. While well-intentioned, the system has its flaws. Some have argued it's too slow or under-resourced. Fourth, the vaccine schedule itself has grown. In 1995, kids received vaccines for hepatitis B, DTP, Hib, polio, and MMR. Today's schedule protects against at least 16 diseases, including rotavirus, meningitis, HPV, and COVID-19. This reflects progress, but it can feel overwhelming for parents trying to keep track of so many shots. And then came COVID-19, which moved vaccine conversations from clinic rooms to national headlines. Trust in the healthcare system was strained in new ways. In this series, we'll break down the science, history, and safety of vaccines. Some of the questions we'll explore, how are vaccines tested and monitored? What do we know and not know about side effects? Is there any connection to autism, genetic variants like MTHFR, or chronic illness? Why are multiple vaccines sometimes given at the same visit? And what about long-term safety? Are there lasting effects? My job here isn't to convince you. It's to give you the clearest, most honest information available so you can decide what's best for your child. Thanks for being here and for being a part of this conversation. If this episode helped you think more clearly or sparked new questions, I'd love to hear from you. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with what you want us to cover next. Your voice matters, and this series is meant to be a conversation. Hope this helps.